So Ivan, if somebody comes to a human given counselor with depression, for example, what approach does the counselor take to, first of all, identifying what needs aren't being met in that person's life? And then how do they help the person start to create a plan to get those needs more, uh, more met, I suppose? Um, well, if, uh, the first thing you, you do is you have to build rapport with them. You have, yeah, you, you have to do that because you can't make progress with anybody unless they trust you and you build rapport and, and we actually teach people how to, to do that fairly easy. But one, one thing you do, for example, is say to them, um, how's your sleep? You see, all depressed people have bad sleep. Uh, and the, you know, how do you wake up in the morning? Oh, I'm absolutely exhausted when I wake up. Um, and and you, then you say, and they, and they kind of know that you are latching onto something important. I mean, they don't intellectually know it, but they're, they're, you've got their attention. And then you say, have you been worrying about anything lately? And they'll say, I mean, I've literally had people say to me, I could worry for Britain, you know, they are warriors. Um, I mean, psychologists like to call it rumination, but actually ordinary language is better because everyone understands what worrying is. So, so they're worrying. And then you, you tease out what they've been worrying about. And it's always related to um, needs not being fulfilled in some way. You see, if you're worried about something, suppose you're worried about your finances. If you don't do anything about it, it's going to niggle and niggle. And then you're, you know, people get depressed. But if you pick up the phone and talk to your bank manager and say, look, I can't pay the mortgage this month. What am I going to do? And the bank manager says, well, we can reschedule. We can do this. We can do that. And you take some action. Your arousal level goes down and you won't be dreaming about it that night. But if you yeah. don't take action about your relationships, your health, your whatever you're worrying about, you're in big trouble. So, uh, so you teach people about this. Uh, cycle which includes dreaming too much because of the rumination so you've got to stop the, rim, rim, the worrying and that's the job of the therapist is to help um, diminish the amount of worrying a person's doing so they and, and, and get them to take action physical so, action, be out, fo focused outwards if somebody listen is listening to this and they tend to worry a lot what advice would you give to them to help them stop worrying so much well, talk to somebody who isn't a worrier, who isn't going to reinforce that, uh, and uh, maybe seek some therapy. But the trouble with a lot of counselling and psychotherapy, as we found, is that it actually encourages introspection. You know, this, this is one of the harmful things about certain styles of therapy. So basically, do something, solve a problem, do some work get out um, help other people serve other people um, so, so because if you're it, it's where you put your attention if you put your attention on what you're worrying about um, you're burning yourself up you're killing yourself effectively you know you've got to put your attention what is uh, outwards um, on solving problems getting your needs met helping other people taking part in community life etc etc and that will keep you sane and it will stop you ruminating because um you know if you're doing that that takes your time uh your energy and your attention so you haven't got any to, to spend on what is essentially a selfish activity focusing on my feelings all the time me 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 which is what depressed people do what are your thoughts on antidepressants and the idea that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance in the, in the human brain? Well, again, that's an idea that was promoted very, very strongly by pharmaceutical companies because it suited them to do so because they had big profits are involved. But actually, the chemical, there's no such thing as a chemical balance in the brain. I mean, that's, the, the chemistry in the brain is constantly fluctuating. You know, it fluctuates with what food you eat. Um, with how much sunshine you get, with um, you know how happy you feel in a relationship, or um, you, you know, uh, sexual enjoyment, and so on. This is changing the chemistry in the brain continually. So um, 
to, to, to say that depression is caused by chemical imbalance is just nonsense. What happens is when people get depressed, the chemistry does change. Of course it does. So, you, but it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not a cause. It's just a description of what's happening in the brain all the time anyway. So, um, however, antidepressants have helped some people. So you can't sort of say all oh, antidepressants are bad because they help people for a number of reasons. One is they they're certainly uh, act as a good placebo to those people that believe in them and, and calm them down so that they can get on with their life and then stop being depressed. That's, that's true. Um, they, they do have some value. Um, but the idea that, oh, I just need to take antidepressants and to put children on antidepressants, I think is a crime, really. That's, you know, if you were to ask me, I, I just think that's ridiculous. What's wrong in that child's life? What needs uh, not being met that's making it worry? Why is, why is it anxious all the time? Why is it wetting the bed? Why is it doing that? Don't give it antidepressants. That's terrible. And Ivan, where can people find more information about the Human Givens Institute online? Uh, well, <clears throat> Dr. Google will usually tell you, you put in Human Givens Institute and it'll come up and you, you can go on there. And Human Givens College, if you're interested in training, and you can do online training uh, and, and then come to actual events and workshops where you learn the skills and you can do a, a diploma and it's uh, people who get on our register as fully qualified human given therapists um, their register is uh, accredited by the professional standards uh, authority which is the same body that accredits for example BACP and all the other types of um, therapeutic approaches so uh, get on that register if you're really keen to help people using um, these kinds of ideas um, and the, the learning the techniques but also the you know, having the understanding and also have the humility to know that however much you know now there's still more to learn <laughs>